there aren't really strong signs of a recession coming. So I do think that 2019 is going to have a positive outlook. I think uh, high beta stocks are a good place to go, provided that you do indeed have a bounce back. And, you know, in my universe, I cover 22 names. I think I have 12 names with a buy. Ten out of those 12 names, I have 50 plus percent upside. Um, yep. So, wow. and I don't believe I need to correct for that. I utilize a 15x multiple, which is a discount to where the market is for my stocks that I have under coverage. Does that, does that mean those stocks recover to back to normal levels or they go even past what they were at, let's say, four months ago? Certainly at least recover to prior levels and provide that they continue to grow as I expect them to. Uh, I think you'll continue to see uh, equity appreciation for those particular stocks. I'm going to push you on some of those names in just a moment, but Joe Terranova's here, and he's been saying this about the FANG stocks. I yeah. realize that's not necessarily your coverage area, but Joe, your point on the FANG well, stocks. Yeah, for sure. And, and 5G is coming. I think that's going to be a tremendous benefit to technology. But uh, Apple, I mean, is that a $158 stock in your view for 2019? So my price target on that is uh, about 210, which is about 30% upside. And as I mentioned, most of the stocks I have a buy on is 50 plus percent upside. Uh, so do I think there's upside from the 150, 160 level? Yes. But do I think that's attractive? Do I think there's a catalyst to drive that up? You know, significantly above 210? No, no, absolutely not. But that's hilarious. One of the names that you think is going to be 30% plus upside is not going to make your top right. picks going <laughs> through this. And that's something that investors who have gotten so beaten up lately might be really interested in hearing what your top picks are. Western Digital, is that one of the top? Yeah, so three of my three top picks, one is Western Digital. That's been beaten up pretty badly as it's exposed to the memory cycle. Right now we're in the midst of a down cycle. I expect that as supply cuts have been made, that that will show up in mid-2019. Margins will stabilize. And uh, you, you will see that that's not the end of the world for the whole memory space. Specifically for Western Digital, that's been hurt the most of the memory players. I believe incorrectly. They have a normalized earnings power of $4 billion. Mm -hmm. It's trading at about $10 billion market cap. That's an incredible value there. Um, and then a second one well, is... It's, it's trading at about $36. You've got a price target of $126. Correct. Yeah. That's Correct. upside of almost 250%. More than 200%. That's like Twilio. Twilio was up 264% this yeah. year in technology. Correct, correct. So I do believe that the, it has been incorrectly punished. And as you see those margins stabilize, that stock is going to rebound in a very, very significant way. Neil, did you ever change your price target? I mean, were you ever looking at lower numbers? Or is that, like, did you change your price target to reflect some of the damage that came in? Were you surprised by how no, punishing I, the market was? No, I was not surprised by the downside. The memory, the memory cycle is very volatile. As investors, we know this. You price that in, you put a lower multiple on that, but you want to look at what normalized valuation is. And as we've seen this play through, the changes in the numbers have not been surprising. I was low on the street, actually, hmm. when we had a big disappointment because we ex absolutely expected there would be downside. But was there anything fundamental that changed what we viewed as a normalized earnings power? Absolutely not. And so our price target has varied maybe plus or minus 5, 10 percent, but not the 50 plus percent that the stock has, uh, uh, has uh, reflected. What's your second favorite stock? So my second favorite stock would be a company called Nutanix, ticker MTNX. It is a enterprise software company. Uh, right now, currently, it effectively prices their software on a perpetual or life of device uh, basis. They are transitioning to a software as a service basis. And as they do that uh, transition, I believe it's going to be easier for them to sell incremental function software functionality to their customers. They already demonstrate very strong retention rates, but now you'll start to see strong upsell rates. And as you can see, a lot of software as a service companies tend to garner much higher multiples than perpetual software companies. And that's because of the ability to layer in additional software functionality and get paid for that. Is that an M&A favorite for you? Because that, that's a name that's been talked about for months as a possible uh, takeover. Sure. So uh, my price target of $72 does not include the potential of m and does, does not. That's a standalone basis. Now, is there a potential for it to be an m and candidate? Absolutely. But that's not something I take into consideration. Your third favorite stock, I should point out, this is a very small market cap. It's only about $200 million, or actually just under that, based on where it closed. Turtle Beach Corporation. I'm not familiar with that stock. So Turtle Beach makes headsets 
for gaming consoles. Um, and it's actually a very interesting stock trajectory. Um, o- over a year ago, it was at less than $2 per share. It was in a distressed debt situation. It benefited from the phenomena of Fortnite, which drove a dr- bunch of uh, incremental users into the gaming ecosystem. And most of those Fortnite users are mobile uh, gamers. They don't utilize a gaming console. But there are a decent amount of gaming console players in there. 200 million Fortnite users, maybe 10 million are using gaming consoles. Um, so that's a small percentage. But those that are using gaming consoles are dedicated to the gaming first-person shooter. They're incremental first-person shooters. They're likely to continue to utilize a first-person shooter game after Fortnite uh, fad fades. And we do expect them to show strong brand value, a refresh, upsell. And right now, it's being priced as if all those incremental Fortnite users, in terms of having bought a headset, are never going to buy another headset again. Hmm. We believe that they are, since they do have a gaming console, those that bought the Turtle Beach headsets, they will refresh, they will upgrade, and it will prove to be a very attractive stock. And we have actually two X upside on that one as well.